Well, Ken, it's a really good question, and the, the interesting part is that nobody really knows yet in the sense that uh, uh, what it's really going to mean. We know that physical gold has been flowing, you know, from the west to the east. The Chinese demand numbers over the past many years have been staggering, and uh, it's very likely to take away from the influence that the corruption in the, in the west has had and all the manipulation because of their in coming influence on the market. Now, no one knows how big this is going to be and so on, but the odds are that we're in the process of a major league change in terms of how gold is priced and what the bad guys, as I would call them, the gold cartel, is able to get away with. And uh, it's a potentially exciting you know, the, proof, you know, the proof will be in the pudding, and we'll just have to see. I've been hearing for years about different arbitrage opportunities, how the Chinese, what price is higher, what they're willing to pay, but that hasn't been shown at all. And, and arbitrages can last for a period of time, but they're ultimately closed if they're, if they're of real importance. So if, if the demand over there continues as good as we think, and if it sets a true price in the physical market and negates a lot of this derivative selling that we have, on the COMEX and around that, uh, it would be fantastic. So, I mean, a guy like Bill Holter believes China owns as much as 20,000 tons of gold. Uh, you know, the one who owns the gold makes the rules. Uh, so I, I want to ask you here, and I, may, I know you alluded to it in your, in your answer, uh, is the paper price manipulation game changing hands here? I've been discussing in my commentary for a while. It's a it's a process that changes, and yes, this gold cartel, which consists of the bullion banks and the U.S. government, the BIS, and other central banks, are in the process of losing control of what they've been doing. Uh, gold is traded differently for all year. Um, it was set up by what happened at the end of last year in the last couple of months. Uh, you've had a respite now, and, and now it seems to be going back to the pattern of, of tra ch trading differently, the way it comes back after the gold cartel attacks. Um, and it's eventually going to be a big, big deal. And I think the real key to know that they're in bad trouble will be when the price of silver takes off, which there's been absolutely no change in the way silver has traded in five years. None. It's the worst trading market I've ever seen in my life, and it's getting, it doesn't appear to be getting any better. So what do you, what do you, what's the significance of silver moving first? Um, can you explain that a little further, Bill? Absolutely. Well, it's, it, it's, it's a question because silver is their Achilles heel. Once they lose control of silver, say it takes out 1850, it's going to go, uh, going to go nuts to the upside. You know, I don't know where they're getting this physical supply, but they're scared to death of losing control of it. And you can tell by the way silver has traded vis-a-vis -vis gold, and that's why the ratio is still out at 81 to 1. I mean, it, and it's, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm as bullish as can be, and I think it's going to explode over 100, but we want to see it change in that, the way it trades. Mm -hmm. it, Interest is way up there, which means they're controlling the physical uh, price through the paper market. Now, the physical market isn't responding, or that they couldn't keep it down here. But they've been able to influence it, so when that changes, then we'll know this process that I'm talking about, the tipping point has gone to the really exciting level, and the prices of gold and silver can just explode out of nowhere. Yeah, it does seem like... Uh Gold is having issues going past 1280, 1285. It hit that ceiling and has just been down since then. And then uh, silver, same story, about 1580 or so, 1590. And uh, so, I mean, what what have you been seeing uh, over the last month? I mean, we've seen silver and gold kind of be in this trading range as opposed to the beginning of the year where they were just really ramping up. February was a huge month for gold. Uh, what are the specifics as to what the cartel has been doing here over the last few weeks, Bill? Well, as I mentioned, it gets silver in lockdown. I call it, there's like a, an anchor on it. It's a magnet at 15 and every rally is sold. And, and gold is starting to, it looks like it's beginning to... Um, act out again and it could be spectacular and 
in this regard, and it, what has changed, or while well, silver is trading just as it has for five crummy years, what is totally different is the way the silver shares are trading. Uh, the HUR today, which is you know, it's a lot of it's gold, but made a new uh, high for the year and and uh, high for the move, close to 187. That's off like a 9900 low. I mean, it's an incredible move this year. And the silver shares have been the best of all. And yet the silver price has done nothing. Now, that didn't happen for five years. And it's a complete change from what we've seen in the past year. So this strongly suggests that some big, big money knows what's coming in silver and knows the bad guys, as I call them, are going to lose control. Right. So it's, it, that's a very exciting development. And it's... Uh, it's a not it's not a hope trade anymore when we talk about silver all of a sudden exploding. So really the big money is acting like the future is going to be better than the past based on the way the mining shares are trading um, as opposed to maybe a couple years ago when this wasn't being seen. Would you agree? Oh, exactly right. Uh, in every single case the mining shares went right back down to the bottom. And we're making, a, the silver shares, we're making a bottom at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, take First Majestic, for uh, example, uh, one, one of the better silver companies, and uh, great management, that the share price went from 250 to 7, 240 to 7. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a big, big deal. In the years past, it would have gone right back to down to 240. And I'm talking about five or ten times. So this is a big change and one worth... Uh, commenting on and, and putting an asterisk along with it. Bill, what what does a bull market look like? Um, and I've been asking some of my latest guests on this, but a bull market in the the junior mining sector, you know, how long does it normally last? And, you know, just to give people an idea of what to expect when they start seeing their portfolios go up just like they have been and not to jump the gun too early on uh, selling. Well, it can be extraordinary, and of course, the last, you know, five years, and maybe in many cases in the junior sector, as long as eight or nine, it's been a horror show, and all I can say is Newton law, Newton's law is going to come into effect again with about equal and opposite reactions, that, you know, the gold and silver markets and the share markets, tiny compared to the, all the other markets in the mainstream world, financial world, and when that's those people, those investors come our way, you will see moves up in the juniors and, and exploration stocks, even from here, 10 to 20 times higher. Wow. It's, it's like the Wild West when it goes, because all this money goes in these tiny little market caps, and it can't handle it. And we've had the reverse for the past many years, and in going back to the bigger shares, you know, I think one of the reasons they're acting so well is they got so underpriced and they were so bad for so long that things are changing. And it's, again, that's a process too, but when the investment sector comes our way, it's going to happen. It's going to be historic moves to the upside and, you know, fortunes are going to be made and all the angst and uh, really rough times we've had over these past years will be a distant memory in the years ahead. Bill, is it going to be a direct result of the financial markets melting down and the transfer of wealth going from precious metals into or from the financialized assets such as just the overall stock market into precious metals? Is this what's going to do it? Well, it doesn't have to. I mean, that can be a big impetus. You can get safe haven buying, and we had a lot of that in January. Uh, it disappeared to some degree, and now it seems to be, it could be... Uh, just very beginning to surface again. But the real key will be when the Skull Cartel runs out of enough physical supply to suppress the price. That is by far a bigger factor. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to keep gold and silver uh, depressed, suppressed at all costs. But they're in a process of losing that uh, ability to control the gold price. And then it's when it happens in silver, that's why it will go nuts. And that's the real key. Now, that said, demand coming from the big investment world that sees trouble coming in general markets, and which certainly is on the horizon, 
that can only be a huge plus for the gold and silver prices and for the share prices. And it could be the nail in the coffin that actually exposes the manipulation uh, that allows these uh, metals to rise like a beach ball pressed underwater. I think you were the one that coined that phrase. Um, Bill. I did. I'll take credit for it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Bill, I, I wanted to ask you any new developments going on with GATA or La Metropole Cafe? Well, it's you know it's been a rough few years. It's picking up, but uh, my my colleague uh, at GATA is uh, Chris Powell's in in uh, Asia right now at a conference and doing a great job at you know exposing the gold silver price uh, suppression schemes. And one thing that is of interest is that a longtime friend of mine went to VMI and listened to Bill Dud Dudley, head of the New York Fed, and they asked him, you know, about whether the Fed, the United States government, has swap gold with other central banks or countries over years and he would not answer the question and he answered the question all they had to do was say no <laughs> so uh we're trying to follow up on it because it's a big deal because it's that is a key thesis to what god has said the united states has done because you cannot sell gold legally in the united states without an act of congress you know our goal However, you can swap gold with a different country and sell their gold. So that's what we're trying to get uh, the press and other people to discuss because we think because of that, uh, a lot of the U.S. gold is encumbered. It's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So will it become a big deal knowing the financial market press asking serious questions? The odds are against it, but you never know. It only takes you know one question like my friend Ware Smith did to... Uh, Bill Dudley at the Fed to catch hold, and all of a sudden they got a problem. Wow, wow, Bill. Well, hey, that uh, sounds like you guys are really onto something, and uh, you know you've been onto something. You've you've been the leader of exposing the manipulation now for years. So, any closing thoughts uh, before we say goodbye here? Well, just that you know, as I mentioned, the last number of years have been really rough for everybody in the industry. Whether you selling you know gold gold coins or you know running a small gold company or running a convention newsletter writers like myself i mean it's in it was just got tired of hearing about it and that's all going to change and we have a boom time ahead like uh we have never seen and uh again as i mentioned earlier it's a process and that process is is underway and it's going to continue so uh it's really time for people to listen to people like yourself that are you know, getting this kind of talk out there and understanding of what's going to happen and why and what they should be aware of because it's it's liable to be quite chaotic in the uh, next year or two. 